Hey, what's up guys? TBL here, coming at you with part two of my Let's Play of Yacht Club Games Shovel Knight. Now, in the last episode, we uh, cleared the first stage here, the planes, took out the, took down the Black Knight, and uh, moving right on to the village. Okay, so, we're in the village now, and as I said before, I give these characters voices based on how I feel about them. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that for NPC characters because I don't get enough time with them to <laughs> really get a feel for their character if they have one. But, uh, halt! No weapons! We have enough to worry about lately without everyone swinging swords around. Oh, <laughs> that's no weapon, just a shovel. You may enter then, and don't forget, press up to talk to everyone. Thanks for the oddly specific instructions. I also like how Shovel Knight is renowned throughout the land for utilizing a shovel as a weapon, but that's not considered... Is that a horsewoman? As a matter of fact, it is. Hello, maiden. <laughs> you meet that old witch down in the juice bar? I think she tells fortunes, but she won't talk to me. Probably because you're a horse. And uh, this guy right here is actually a special NPC. There are musical notes that look like this hidden through every single stage in the game. And uh, when you find them, you bring them back to this bard, and he'll play the music for you. Hail, Traveler! I am but a simple bard, but I have a big problem. I've lost all my music sheets. Well, you're a terrible bard. My entire repertoire lay scattered across the land. Also, I, I find it odd that he didn't quite memorize at least tidbits of the music that he wrote. If you ever find a music sheet, return it to me, and I shall reward you. Handsomely. That's weird. Eight music sheets. Well, that must have been from my last, uh... From when I actually first beat this file. I must have collected a bunch of music sheets without actually bringing them to him. Let's see here. Oh, you found reprise. My original plan was to just copy and paste our main theme, but the horse lady kept staring daggers at me. Ah, <laughs> uh, you gotta love developer jokes. But now that I have this music sheet, I can perform it for you any time. Just ask. Then you just do the same thing. Talk to him again by pressing up on the D-pad if you're playing on the uh, Wii U or the 3DS. They'll say, Hail, Shovel Knight, hero of music. What can the humble bard do for you today? Play me a tune, splendid bard. And, let's see, we're missing number 12. Number 22, 23, 29, 27, 38, 39, 36, and that's it. Hold on, so, two reprieves. Oh, you're darn right, it's our main theme. Shovel Knight can jam to that. Alright. This NPC right here is a, is a nice lady. She, she compliments you on your looks and kind of creeps me out a little bit. She stares at you. She's one of the few NPCs who will actually turn and look at you if you pass her. And who is this? This is a new guy. Goat Armorer. I've been sent here to convene with Ariel Anvil customers. Please enjoy this convenience. Oh, okay. I never knew about this. Usually the armor shop is in a later city, but I guess in a new game plus, they send this guy over here so you can buy armors earlier. This right here is probably what's considered the best armor in the game. It gives you a special ability if you, uh... Go ahead and read it. Dynamo Mail. Perform two consecutive shovel drops to unleash a powerful charge slash. It's basically like the, the regular charge slash here, except you do a double shovel drop on an enemy. It immediately charges up a charge slash, and then you just release it. It's a pretty great attack for uh, some of the stronger bosses of the game, like Polar Knight. But we are going to stick with the ornate plate because it is flashy, acrobatic, and completely useless. In terms of actual upgrades, I think the only one I have left is one more magic upgrade. Let's see. Anything else? Well, it's, oh yeah, it's already quite the accomplished mage, I see. Sorry, don't think I can help you any further. Alright. Now, normally in the city, let me give you a quick tour. There's a lot of places for you to go. This is uh, down in the cellar here. A couple of NPCs who you can help out. This king, you uh, after you defeat King Knight and rescue Pride Morkeep, he'll speak to you about it. Deposed King. I, I imagine this guy would like a uh, King Harkinian from the CDI Zelda games voice, but I can't do that, you know. I, I, I'm not much of a my boy. Oh, woe is me. The king of nothing. Not to rule, but my lone boss stool. Nice rhyme. King Knight sits on Pride Moor's throne. That gilded goon, he'll get his soon. Oh, so he's specifically trying to, to rhyme. Cool. Right here, this dancer, 
She uh, she will do a nice little jig for you if you go and defeat Spectre Knight, which will actually probably be one of our next targets. I don't know if I'm a, if I want to do Pride More Keep or uh, or or Spectre Knight's area first. Well, that Spectre Knight. If someone could defeat him, I would bestow upon them my greatest treasure. Sounds sexy. Over here, you have the Truffle Acolyte. Hello, fish friend. All hail the Truffle King. Of course you ask who? Who's the Truffle King? You've never heard of the Truffle King? Half trout and half apple. Pronounced like mouthful. Truffle. Trop, truffle. I don't know. It's one of the forest gods here to help those in need. I'm telling the truth. He actually is telling the truth. Uh, you can buy Truffle Chalices from him, which I do believe I already have. Oh, no, I don't want to talk to you again. No, no, stop. I guess I can't bring up my inventory in here, but you buy Truffle Chalices from him, and then you take those chalices to the Truffle King, off in a little pond, and he'll give you uh, Iker, which is basically potions, stuff that can restore your HP, MP, make you invulnerable, and uh, make you magnetically attract treasure. This guy right here is Chester. He's going to be your best, your best friend and probably your worst enemy throughout the entire journey of this game. He, uh... He collects relics. You buy your first relic, which is your magical items in this game, from him when you uh, first come to this village. And I believe the first item is, what, the fishing rod? Yeah, either the fishing rod or the chaos sphere. I think it might actually be the chaos sphere. I'm pretty sure it's either one or the other. But uh, the relics that are hidden throughout stages, if you complete a stage with the night boss at the end of it without collecting the relic for that stage, uh, good old Chester here will bring it back to the city so that you don't have to go through the stage again. You can just come back to the city and buy it from him. I imagine him with like kind of an Australian accent. So it brings a tear to my eye to see a walking reliquary. Rel 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 can't say that. Reliquary. Reliquary like yourself. Reminds me of when I got into the business, buddy. Thanks, Chester. That was a terrible Australian accent, but hidden wall. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Anyways, for the most part, I've collected most of the things that there are to collect in this game. Like I said before, the last thing I needed was uh, that last magic boost. So we're not really going to be coming back here too often. Without further ado, we're going to be moving straight on forward. You can collect that uh, musical scroll right here by waiting for the lady who's carrying the the water pails there. Ew, these buckets are heavy. Basically what you do is you wait for her to walk over near this platform and then hop on top of it like that. Then collect the music scroll and off we go. All right. We're going to start off our journey right here at Pride More Keep, the lair of the King Knight. Let's go. Alright, so here we are at Pride More Keep for Shovelry. Pride More Keep is probably going to be the first stage that you uh, that you come across in this game. Most people choose this over, over Spectre Knight stage, but I think it's a good thing. This is a good stage to get used to the game. Spectre Knight stage can be a little bit on the difficult side. If you haven't quite gotten a feel for the game's, uh, where do you think you're going? Nowhere. If you haven't quite gotten a feel for the game's physics yet. Pride More Keep is a wonderful, beautiful golden castle, complete with pots of dropping, infinitely spawning, infinitely pouring lava. I can't imagine that helps the resale value. We're gonna move on. I see a little shiny fishing spot. I'm gonna take advantage of that in just a sec. If you'll recall from the first episode, anytime you see a shiny pit like this, go ahead and drop down and fish. It's like Shovel Knight says, it's never a bad time to fish. It's very relaxing, especially for a, a night on the road. <laughs> it's a, that's a rat with a propeller strapped around it. Poor thing. I, I imagine like just some mad scientist sitting back in a lab with like a, a rat in one hand and a propeller in the other, thinking, I will mix these somehow. Then just just having the awe-inspiring moment of uh, <laughs> finding duct tape. If you if you've ever seen Invader Zim, you'll probably know the scene I'm I'm, I'm referencing here with the aliens who like to fuse things, <laughs> and they fuse things by duct taping two items together and and call it fusion. And that's what I imagine th this crazy scientist saying, just like holding holding a rat in one hand and uh, propeller in the other, and then duct taping the two together and saying, whoa! Fusion! I don't know. This is this is the kind of stuff that goes on in my mind when I'm trying to play a game. Anyways, we've made our way to the first mini boss here, who's just a a knight 
of Pride More Keep. These guys are pretty, uh, pretty interesting villains. They're like uh, basic DuckTales enemies. They'll try to block your shovel if you're coming from uh, from coming from the top. So what you kind of have to do is get them to block in one direction and then attack in the other. Pretty easy to take care of. Oh, moving forward, we've got some beautiful chandeliers here that definitely aren't a trap. You know, it's actually funny. Um, uh, later on in the game, <laughs> King Knight apparently he takes a lot of pride in these uh, in these chandeliers of his. And later on in the game, he accuses you of destroying his beautiful chandeliers. I, I mean, it, that's not my fault. These things are just poorly engineered. Dropping right out of the sky. All right, now this is a special room right here. This is actually the room that I think leads to the, the hidden relic for this stage. And the way you get over is pretty simple, but uh, the timing is a little bit difficult. you got to time your jumps from platform to platform. Like that. And then just stand over here in the silhouette of Shovel Knight, and after a couple of seconds, bada bing, bada boom, you'll get David Blaine over to this area, where you'll see Chester sitting in front of a blue chest. Like I said before, I've already collected the relics in a regular game, and they they stay collected in the new game plus. But you open this chest, Chester drops out, and he's like, "Say, so how's that investment working out, mate? It's a pretty great relic, you know. Sniff on me suit already." That's a terrible accent, but whatever. That's just, I, I imagine him with an Australian accent. He's like an explorer, you know? Looks like he's got a little scuba gear thing going on. <laughs> and uh, just to further explain why I imagine Chester with an Australian accent, probably because I was watching the Crocodile Hunter earlier. Then just hop back on over and let's head on up and complete the stage. As far as speedrunning goes, I don't think this stage takes too long. Like, we're not at the end yet, but we're reasonably close to it. But again, this is one of the game's uh, beginning stages. It's kind of like a training stage for you, so you wouldn't really expect it to be that long. No, stop grabbing the ladder. I'm trying to fireball here. All right, now this is actually one of the game's puzzles. You want to try to collect all of the gems in, in this part without breaking these platforms right here. pretty simple. Doing that will lead you up to this area. You got more magicians. Take those guys out and head on up. Hidden wall right here. Make sure you collect those gems. And a hidden treasure chest. I actually didn't know about that. I just got stopped, you know, midway through this tarp. <laughs> I figured I'd hit it. So there you go, another rule. Beware the top. Remember, Shovel Knight loves treasure. And go ahead and Either skip this area or drop on down. Either way, there's going to be a mini boss heading over the next part. I do believe it was the Griffin. Now, this is actually one of the newest nightly rules. If you guys noticed in the previous video, I posted nightly rules everywhere. The next one is real men don't use checkpoints. That's right. We're going to go this. We're going to go through this the manly way. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't die. This is a mini boss who's a little on the tough side. As soon as he starts firing fireballs, you're going to want to get to a specific area and kneel. That area is about right here. And mini boss defeated without dying. I'd say that's a victory. Uh oh. Shovel Knight's greatest fear an army of propeller rats. I swear, this is like the greatest. I, I, I really do imagine this mad scientist thinking this is the greatest idea ever put propellers on rats. Alright, there is a secret area here. Wait for one of the rats to show up and then bounce your way up. No, <laughs> you can't do that. Head on over. Make sure you watch out for these guys, because easy to get trapped in between them. Generally, I would say just drop down behind one of them and let loose with your righteous chivalry. Thy were primed to taste the steel of my shuffle. Anyway, just progress on through. Climb up here. Break the blocks, drop down, and the treasure chest is yours. I am prepared for bounties most esteemed. There we go, got ourselves a treasure. Now really, at this point, since I've already collected most of the items in the game, collecting money is really just uh, kind of a vanity thing for me. 
And I see the little hidden wall symbol there. Then break through that. I really don't need to collect any uh, any more cash because I've got <laughs> everything that money could buy in this game. But you know, I still do it. Plus, I like to show people exactly where uh, most of the hidden hidden items and treasures in this game are. Wouldn't be a good let's play if I didn't uh, actually show some of the game off. Although the fact that I have are that I already have so many items really actually kind of uh, kind of helpful for me. It means I'm not going to have to spend too much time pouring through some of the stages. I really want to see if I can get that magic because I'm so I'm a little bit less than my max MP, and I like to go through the game with as much magic power as possible. Don't feel like dealing with him, so we're going to give him the Warhorn. The Warhorn is actually the most powerful item in this game. It's one of the in-game items. You get it? I do I do believe once you uh, once you take on Polar Knight stage. And it'll one-shot most, if not all, enemies other than, you know, of course, the, uh, the obligatory mini-boss and actual stage bosses. Only downside is it takes about 20 MP. This is just a uh, spot for another one of the musical notes. That's where you pick up the musical note for this stage. I do believe there's two of those in every single stage. This is where one of them is. Now, I feel a little bit silly because this next part right here had me, con had me just completely confounded for like maybe two to three minutes. I didn't know what you were supposed to do with this. I didn't realize that you just bounce up and land on the pages that fly up. It took me the longest time, and I, I, I'm not proud of that. Another fishing spot? Although I imagine, what kind of fish lives at the bottom of a bottomless pit with... Oh, it's a truffle fish. Wait, don't eat me, knight. The truffle king commands me to share his bounty with you. All hail the truffle king, the king of fish and fruit. Long may his stem grow. Indeed. There we go, and he gave us an... Iker of boldness, become invincible for 10 seconds. Absolutely fantastic. Something we'll uh, hopefully not need, but you never know. Anyway, if your book time runs out, just give it a smack. It'll, uh, oh, <laughs> complete and utter failure there. Oh, and you know what the worst part is? We destroyed the checkpoint, so we are gonna have to fight our way back. As a matter of fact, you know what? I don't think I should make everybody watch me climb all the way back to that stage, so we'll cut out here and cut back in once we reach that spot where we die. Alright, here we are back in the same room where we uh, <laughs> where we took a plunge. Again, sorry about that, just a little bit of noobishness on my part, but it goes to show you why, uh, <laughs> why you should probably keep the checkpoints around unless you're really confident in your ability to get these platforming sections perfectly. But, as the nightly rule did state, real men don't use checkpoints. Right, Shovel Knight? Indeed. Coming on through here, I did wind up taking a bit of damage from some of the lava, both in previous rooms and in that one uh, we just saw right there. Hopefully we can avoid taking any more damage. Before the end, got another Griffin mini-boss right here. Oh, forgot about the second stream of fire there. Oh man, we are really low on HP. That's gonna make uh, fighting King Knight interesting to say the least. Good thing we got that Iker of Boldness from the Trufflefish. Alright, here's the second save point. I believe this one is right before King Knight himself, so uh, we're gonna leave that one intact. Here we go, okay. Now for, uh, for King Knight, I imagine his voice is a little bit Sort of, sort of, kind of like Shovel Knights himself, just not quite as chivalrous, but more so, I am the king, kind of, you know, indignant, sort of Starscream. He is kind of like a Starscream, you know, he, uh, he, he served the king of Pride Morkeep before usurping him, so. An interloper is in our midst, begone from our throne room, knave. I'm no more of an intruder than you. You aren't even a real king. Ah, but you're mistaken. The Enchantress saw me for my fabulously regal self, and now all bow before me. You're not but a decadent dandy. Hey, dandies are cool. Prepare to taste justice. 
Shovel Justice. <laughs> that is probably, if you were to, to describe all of Shovel Knight in one sentence, it would be that. Prepare to taste justice. Shovel Justice. And overall, that's exactly what we're going to bring King Knight. Silence! Nope, there will be no silence. Now, we are going to try to defeat him without losing both of our health there. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. I, I am going to be using the uh, Chaos Sphere here. This is one of the first relic items you're going to pick up in the game, and it is absolutely beast. You can use it to absolutely decimate most of the bosses in the game. Because it bounces around and uh, can hit most bosses twice in a row. If you catch him in the corner, especially against the boss that, uh... Hold on. I'm trying to focus here. But if you can catch if you can catch a boss that takes uh, recoil damage, or rather, uh, takes recoil when he's hit, you can just use these to absolutely decimate him. But there we go. We have defeated the King Knight. Got an we got ourselves a feat as well on a diet. Have no idea what that means. All I know is that Shovel Justice has prevailed. Onward for great shovelry! There we go, Pridemore Keep has now been completed, and we are going to treat ourselves to a nice night off. Sweet dreams, Shovel Knight. Well done. It definitely took a little bit longer than I was expecting or hoping to take down Pridemore Keep. I really wasn't expecting that, uh, that platforming fail in the middle there, but we managed to push on through, and we are one step closer to our goal of rescuing Shield Knight. Always cover your fires. At least if you like money. Indeed. But anyway, there we go. Pride More Keep has been cleared. That didn't take too, too long. Looks like we got a, uh, a random field show up there. So we're going to go ahead and take that out really, really quick. Hopefully it doesn't take too, too long. What these are, are they're random occurrence that will pop up throughout the, uh, throughout the world map. And it's basically just chances for you to go and build up extra money. Take out that uh, little dragon dactyl there. Because he's just going to keep douche-dogging around. Not today, son. Obviously, thou dost not know who thou art messing with. The Shovel Knight. Uh-oh. I take the safe approach when fighting those guys, especially when they're they're near pits like that, because uh, ain't nobody got time for that. But there we go. That was a quick one. This is near the beginning of the game, so uh, we completed it really quickly. As you can see, a gem just showed back up all over there on Pride More Keep. That means that uh, that stage is now open up for a quick little treasure run, sort of like what we just did. Although, we'll leave that for a future episode. I think that's enough for now. That was pretty much Pride More Keep, which will be generally the first, the first stage most people will take on after they beat the Black Knight. We did get through it pretty quickly. Had one... Uh, <laughs> One unfortunate death that caused us to start over. Hopefully that won't be happening too much in uh, future episodes, but we did manage to take down the King Knight and liberate Pride More Keep. For those of you who are playing the game for the first time, you should definitely head back to the village now and talk to the King down in the, uh, down in the cellar. It'll unlock a little bit of extra dialogue that you'll probably enjoy. Anyways, that's probably going to be it for this one, guys. Be sure to tune in next time when we take on the Spectre Knight down in the Lich Yard. Sure to be an interesting endeavor. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, feel free to check out my channel, where I've got a ton more gaming videos, including more Shovel Knight, coming up soon. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and you'll tune in for the next episode of TBL Play Shovel Knight. As always, I am the Black Link. You guys stay frosty.